What's up? I'm Cyrobe, and this video is going to be exactly the same as my usual content, but more focused on analyzing data mined information and math directly from Elden Ring's code with less of a focus on jokes or editing style. If you're new here, my usual content focuses on min-maxing builds for Elden Ring mixed with entertainment and snappy editing to keep the videos engaging and not lose all retention the moment I speak about legitimate numbers and mathematics. This idea sparked from my last video where I invented the best critical damage build in Elden Ring, but I kept emphasizing that there was just way too much information information to explain thoroughly in a single video, because we'll be taking the deep dive into the math of Elden Ring and the code the game uses today, which was thankfully made possible by Opera GX, the gaming browser that brings magic and fantasy to life. It comes with the GX control panel that lets users limit the amount of bandwidth, CPU, or RAM you're willing to let your browser use while gaming. When you click these toggle switches, it enhances performance on your PC while gaming with your browser open by allowing you to set a specific limit for how many resources this browser can use. Just turn it on and set the limit lower, and that's it. Very very simple setup. Opera GX also offers you a ton of customization. There's a ton of mods already added to the browser, or you can create a completely new one, whichever suits you the most. I'm going to pick the medieval mod as it matches the RPG theme on my channel, which includes background music, keyboard sounds, opening and closing tab sounds, theme and colors that highlight your entire browser, a dedicated wallpaper, and when I say customization, I mean it. If anything gets too overbearing, you can easily toggle everything on or off and even individually activate different parts within the mods menu. This lets you select like specifically your favorite parts of whatever mod you choose. I literally have two times the amount of unique processes going on in my GX browser with the mod running, which still doesn't use as many resources as other browsers that have less than half the processes running. GX is lightweight and hardly impacts performance with the GX control active, and it's also equipped with an import tool that allows you to quickly import all your settings from your previous browsers to GX like browsing history, bookmarks, and cookies. So ditch your old browser and upgrade yours to get the GX experience today. You've probably heard of the term data mining before once or twice in your life, but it's often a misnomer. What most people really mean to say is more akin to data extraction. Data mining literally refers to the process of using external programs to sift through large pools of data to recognize patterns, trends, and relationships from data sets specifically. But if you say data mining, pretty much everyone knows what you're implying anyways. Regardless, in Elden Ring, data mining or data extraction isn't just something you can do. It's not as simple as downloading something like Cheat and engine and requires a more complex process to even make sense of the information that you obtain. Which is why I haven't data mined before, because honestly, I didn't think most people will care for it as much since it isn't necessary for build making videos, but I still find it very interesting and hope you all will too. My build making process is done through manual A-B testing by myself, where I essentially reverse engineer how the game works through the data I gather and putting that same data in simpler, more digestible terms for the results shown. I've always done everything on this channel myself, including all the editing, researching, and math used, but since I don't have direct access to those tools or programs to observe the code in Elden Ring, I sought out the help of Cryptid Tracker, who is a data miner for Elden Ring and other Souls games. To add to his credibility, he created this spreadsheet, which I referenced in my last video, and I know that a lot of people have used before. Here's him explaining how he organized it, and yes, I did ask him for his permission before showing our DMs. For the purpose of this video, I asked him to provide me with a lot of very specific information that isn't available anywhere on the internet, which thankfully he was able to do throughout this entire video, so huge thanks to him. Cryptid focuses on player versus player data, while my channel is dedicated specifically to min-max builds for Elden Ring's player versus environment data. So when I talked to him, he actually mentioned that I had discovered something that was in Elden Ring's code, except he didn't have it on his spreadsheet yet, and is something which hasn't been published anywhere on the internet. I discovered what's known as the missing crit type motion value when I was testing Executioner's Great Axe in my previous videos. No matter what my stats were, the Executioner's did more critical damage to every enemy I tested it on, which was significantly higher than the Misery Core, despite having a lower critical modifier. But I had a ton of comments saying that I'm wrong about this, and that Fextra Life says this is how critical damage works, and despite my video evidence, it doesn't add up to that, so I must be in the wrong. <sighs> Look, I love hating on Factual Life as much as the next guy when it comes to them inflating their own viewership from the multitude of Twitch embeds on every single one of their wiki pages that they own, and how they're not diligent with keeping those same wiki pages consistently updated or adding onto it themselves, and most of the times are just carried by a game's fan base and community that aren't directly affiliated with Factual Life at all to do it for them while they reap all the benefits and recognition from it. But I digress. Factual Life does decently well with providing places for otherwise inaccessible information, which I've had to rely on more than I'd like to admit. Until today, this was the only piece of detailed information related to how critical damage works in Elden Ring that exists anywhere on the internet, which, again, was probably provided by some random guy who has literally no affiliation with the actual Fextra Life team at all. 
So it's hard to place blame when a wiki like this is only kept alive by people like myself and others who try to keep these pages updated in our free time since Factualife doesn't really care to. But unfortunately, these numbers are not entirely correct and are actually out of date. The data for critical damage on this page is currently based on patch 1.09 and earlier. That page also refers to these numbers as damage multipliers, but that's not technically correct either. Their table does not represent the most recent patch at the time of this video, which is currently 1.10, where FromSoft buffed all critical damage. When the patch notes say they buffed critical damage, they didn't actually buff critical modifiers on weapons, but rather buff the motion values that are used when performing critical attacks like re posts or backstab, which is what that table is supposed to represent, and again is incorrect. This is the most accurate and up-to-date version of that same list for patch 1.10 and likely onward unless otherwise later changed. These numbers represent what is known as a motion value, which are direct multipliers to a player's attack power, and are similar to critical modifiers, which are also direct multipliers to a player's attack power. Motion values from attacks and critical damage modifiers from your weapons are both factored directly into the attack power number before accounting for enemy defensive stats, which becomes your pre-mitigation damage. If it's not a critical damage modifier nor a motion value but still increases your damage like any sort of percent increase buff would likely be considered a damage multiplier and that gets factored in after accounting for defensive stats to your now post-mitigation damage. There are three main sets of motion values for every weapon which changes depending on what type of enemy you're performing a critical attack on. Both of these tables of motion values are specific and are only applied when you repost a medium type enemy, which consists of humanoid enemies roughly the size and shape of a player, like the Crystallians, Clean Rot Knights, player NPCs, and literal other players, plus a few discrepancies. It's not quite clear how Elden Ring classifies every enemy type, but previously this was assumed to be used in every scenario and context regardless of enemy type, which is not the case as I discovered when I created my critical damage build. The existence of the large type enemy classifications is what I found and refers to when players perform repost attacks against enemies that are far larger in size than the player, which happens to be the case with pretty much every boss in Elden Ring and a vast majority of enemies you'll encounter besides a few discrepancies as well. On top of Fextra Life not including the repost motion values for large enemy types, they also didn't have the specific motion values unique to backstab specific motion values, which were not listed anywhere else on the internet either as far as I know, but was given to me from Cryptid's data mining. These values are used everywhere the player can perform a backstab, regardless of the enemy size or how an enemy looks. So it's a lot more simple since it appears that these values are only used for backstabs specifically. Cryptid also told me that apparently the vulgar militiamen have like a fourth category for their own completely unique and separate backstab and repost motion values that don't apply to anything else in the entire game except just them. So we're just going to ignore these weird little guys as that isn't ever really relevant. So what do we do with this information? Now that we know what motion values are, what critical modifiers represent, and that each weapon's critical repost or backstab motion values vary greatly depending on the type of enemy it's used on, we should just simply multiply it all like I said in my last video, right? Yes and no, that's just a small paraphrase to get the main concept across because there are a lot more points that go into it which involves this table of conditions and formulas right here. This table represents a more simplified pseudocode version of the conditions within the actual code of Elden Ring which were compared towards real-time simulations of the official code. So if I use a calculator from this data, plug in relevant information, and see that the result from the calculator is almost identical to the results in game, we can assert that both are equal and that the margin of error is at most within single digits. But this is as accurate as it gets without being a developer at FromSoft. In case you're wondering what Elden Ring's code literally looks like, I don't think I can actually show it here without getting into some hot water, as this is what Elden Ring uses for almost all of its complex data calculations, which is pretty much the same as every other Dark Souls game. So I'll just briefly describe it as using the C programming language mixed with inline assembly to achieve accurate and efficient calculations for advanced mathematical operations. Now, let's show our work to clarify the process in real time, and don't worry, we're just going to do this once because it gets really tedious. For our litmus test, we'll be performing a repost attack on Margit, who is a large type enemy. We have an arbitrary 99 strength value and a fire affinity executioner's great axe at plus 25 which gives you a total attack power of 840. And it doesn't matter if you two-hand it. It will always be based on your one-handed attack power for specifically critical attacks. You need to first process the attack power of a weapon once per its damage type and once per motion value of that weapon's class, 
which is also what changes depending on the enemy's type and depending on if you're reposting or backstabbing. No matter what type of critical attack we perform, the Great Axe class of weapons will always have at least two motion values, which makes things a bit easier. Since Margit is a large type enemy, we use these set of motion values specifically, 1.27 for the first hit and 3.16 for the second hit. Our Executioners has a total attack power of 840. 417 of that is standard physical damage. 422 is fire damage. And yes, I know this adds up to 839 and not 840, but I assume Elden Ring is just very specific with how they round up their numbers and the attack power. We'll take the 417 physical damage, multiply that by the critical modifier listed on the weapon. In this case, it's 115, which we convert to a decimal form of 1.15, and then also multiply it by that first motion value. Then we swap the physical damage to our fire damage, which is 422, and we use the same crit modifier and first motion value all the same, which looks like this. That's just for the first hit, but we're far from done with it yet. Now for the second hit, we can do this pretty much the same. We use the same 417 physical damage and then multiply it with the same crit modifier, but this time change the motion value to the second motion value multiplier like so, and then repeat the same process, but instead use the 422 fire damage for the second hit's motion value. Now, don't add any of this together just yet, because we still need to factor in the defensive stats of our target. This is where the table that I showed earlier with the conditions comes into play. The DEF represents the defense of the enemy being hit by your critical attack. Generally, every boss and PvE enemy has the same defense for all types of damage. Margit has 103 defense and 103 fire defense specifically. And no, this isn't to be confused with damage absorption or negation either, which Margit has zero for all except minus 10% for slashing, and plus 40% against holy, which isn't used by either of our weapons, so essentially no absorptions to worry about here. If DEF equals 103, let ATK stand for whatever damage numbers we calculated earlier, which we will have to plug all of them in one at a time, and I'm only going to cover the full process for the first hit as I already explained what changes earlier, and you can just see the rest here. This is the data for our first and second hits. Plug in 103 everywhere it says DEF because that will never change. And then take the first cumulative attack power value, which is what we get after multiplying the original attack power with the crit modifier fire and the first motion value and plug it in for the ATK. If the condition is true, use the corresponding formula. If it's false, then go down to the next condition until it returns true. So for condition 1, is the 103 defense greater than our attack power times 8? No, obviously not, so move on to condition number 2. Is the 103 defense just flat out greater than our ATK? Not true again, so now condition 3. Is the 103 DEF greater than our ATK times 0.4? Not quite, so move on to condition number 4. Is the 103 DEF greater than 0.125 times our ATK? Yes, it actually is. So we don't need to go to condition number five because this is our first true that we got returned. So now we would use condition number four's corresponding formula and plug in our variables ATK and DEF and calculate. 530 is now our first actual damage number for only the standard physical damage portion on the first hit of the repost motion value used against a large type enemy. This is just one fourth of the work shown for the entire repost data that we would need to repeat three more times using the other damage types and other motion values. So here would be the rest as you can see. The basic arithmetic at this point gets quite tedious, but I'll follow what I just went over. Now I hope you guys can see why I tend to dance around the details a little because again, this was just one fourth of the math that I explained with the rest being shown here because most people have probably stopped watching already as I turn into a professor giving a lecture to my class. I mean, audience. Okay, now after all these calculations, this is when you finally would include any buffs or damage multipliers with the percentage increase to increase your damage even further, like the Flame Grant Me Strength or Golden Vow spells for example, but we aren't using buffs since we are only looking for the total critical damage output of both weapons. Now, we are comparing all our damage for the Executioners against the Misery Cord on Margit. If you notice, the Executioner's Great Axe surpasses the Misery Cord by roughly 700 damage, which is a crazy significant amount. From your very first playthrough all the way to New Game Plus 7 and onwards, the Executioner's Great Axe has a higher damage output than the Misery Cord when using reposts on large type enemies. But what about reposting medium type enemies? Well, for repost motion values on medium type enemies, the Misery Cord wins by barely 300 final damage on average. But reposts on medium type enemies are rarely ever found in PvE anyways and are only frequently seen in PvP. Now remember, the third category of unique backstab motion values that are used anywhere back 
backstabs are possible, which goes for both PvE and PvP, these end up being fairly even, with the Executioners being 70 damage over the Misery Cord on average in mostly every PvE backstab, and also being under the Misery Cord by 70 damage only if the enemy player has at least 60 Vigor in PvP, while wearing a full set of something like the Veteran's Armor, for example, which allows the Misery Cord to barely surpass the Executioners. This is the result of your Fire Defense stat scaling extremely well alongside your Vigor stat. Leveling up your Vigor stat naturally gives players more Fire Defense for free as they gain more HP, and get very little Lightning Defense from leveling the same attributes. But it's also important to consider frequency. Every single large or medium PvE enemy can have its stance broken to then be reposted, which is by far the highest damage output and the most efficient method of generating critical hits. When it comes to other medium-sized enemies like players, they can't have their stance broken to repost at all anyways unless they suffer a guard break repost, which is technically the same but can happen far less often. If a guard break doesn't happen, your only other option for a repost on a player is from a parry. Players in Elden Ring have a large amount of popular attack that can't be parried for reposts, like jump attacks, tons of spells, and ashes of war like giant's hunt, which are really the only two areas where the misery cord can get its value from a repost on players to surpass the executioners. I also made sure to compare the two weapons in new game and new game plus seven for reposting large type enemies like the armored version of Godfrey's first phase that has a 10% physical damage resist and a 20% fire damage resist and should stop the great axe from dealing more damage than the misery cord since he also has zero pierce resist and zero lightning resist. This should finally allow the misery cord to surpass the executioners and critical damage on large type enemies. So surely here is when the misery cord would do more damage, right? Even with the defensive odds stacked against it, while the misery cord had zero defensive stats to worry about, the executioner's great axe still out damages the misery cord and is the most consistent weapon to use for critical damage in Elden Ring, since mostly every enemy in PvE uses large type repost motion values, which grants the executioners far more damage consistently in PvE reposts and backstabs. There is definitely a place for the misery cord to serve its purpose, it's not completely worthless. And that's thanks to its lightweight and low stat requirement. But the places where it succeeds just happen to be a bit less frequent, and its success also depends on the armor and overall stats on a player, and if you even have the opportunity to parry or guard break them to gain this advantage, which again varies greatly per person anyways. Thank you all so much for watching. Please show this video some love because an insane amount of effort goes into this kind of video, which I don't mind doing as long as you guys genuinely enjoy it. Be sure to drop a fat fucking like and a massive sub if you got this far, so my efforts don't go unnoticed as one of the last people in the Elden Ring community still genuinely dedicated to it before everyone jumps back on it when the DLC comes out. Until next time, I'm Cyrobe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.